identification of a particular place was based on the identification of another revenue item. So here we have an example, which is Al-Lahu, A-Alam. And then the description of the location of that particular place was adjacent Gauss Fitting Shop. And this description of the location was based on another revenue item, which made it very difficult for revenue collectors to actually identify the exact location of revenue items within a particular area. So just to put this in better retrospect, um, we are going to have a look at the old data system and then what the digital solution that we have developed. And then here to the left, you have the old database. And then to the right, you have the digital solution that we had been working on. Now, if you take a closer look on it, here we have what we call Olu Store. And to the left, the description of that particular revenue item has been tied to um, a description. And here they say near VRA transformer at Kawakuri. Now the question is, how does the revenue collector identify the store if he doesn't actually know where Kawakuri is? And this was what they had to work with. It was very difficult for them to actually identify the location based on this type of register. But with the solution that had been developed, it is location-based. And you actually get to see the location of the revenue items presented on a map. Now, to take a closer look, uh, with a map like this, the revenue collector is able to see the overlay, the display and the location of the facilities within the area in which he is searching. Now, the system actually identifies each revenue item within the boundary to which it is set up on. So to also make things easy, based on the type of revenue item the revenue collector is looking for, it actually displays where those items can be identified. So in this case, where we have the red marks, we're actually looking for only store right now. So where we have the red marks, this represents where all the business items are, and we're actually looking for a business. So what it means is the area that isn't colored doesn't have any business on it. So the revenue collector actually now knows within which areas he should be searching. But because this is a digital solution, it is possible for you to actually put in search queries to identify what you're looking for. So once the revenue collector has the system and then searched by the name of the person, he's able to identify it. And in this case, um, when, you, when he searched for it, he's able to see it. And then down here, we have the name of the business as was displayed in the Excel sheet that I showed earlier on. But here now you can see it and then you can also see the owner of it. But in the Excel sheet, they didn't have this. Now, this is just a snapshot of the solution that has been developed, but I will go and look at the details of it. Um, this isn't working. Okay, so basically we're helping MMDAs transform their information like this to information that's to information that now looks something like this. So this is a hard copy spatial map that district assemblies used to develop using rapidograph pens. But now we have helped them evolve and then change information that looks like this to to information that looks like this. And this information is actually digital base and district assemblies can actually interact and save information within these digital solutions that they have converted from hard copy to soft copy. Now to look at the approach that we use in the development of this particular system, uh, we will be looking at um, the approach that we use and then it starts with digitization where we help the district assemblies digitize the maps the hard copy maps as we had shown, and then the address map of an area. Then we help them with the street naming address and then the assigning of UPNs. Then they go to the field to collect data on the revenue items. As I mentioned in the challenges, there was a difficulty in identifying the type class and number of businesses or revenue items within that particular area. Then we integrate the legal framework which is used to identify the rates um, for revenue items, that is the fee fixing resolution and then the valuation rule. And then we also improve in the mobilization of the revenue collection by creating the entire system which they can use to interact with information. Now, the first two sections of the approach is what we classify under the SNP approach, that's the street naming and property addressing. And then the last three is under the DLF approach. 
Now, the approach in which we have adopted uh, or we adopted is based on certain frameworks and then tools. And then um, the frameworks that is actually guiding the work that we do in the MMDs are this. And then to the left, you can see the tools that the MMDs are actually using in the construction of their data. And most of these tools here are open sourced. And then the entire frameworks are actually frameworks that are developed and within the normal jurisdiction of the country. Now, to look at the SNP approach, that is where we start with the digitization. The district assemblies, first of all, find or get an aerial photo. And then what they start to do is to try and identify the boundaries for which each of the revenue items are actually located within. And this is what we call the digitization phase. Now, once they have identified all those, we identify the rules that they take their access from. And then we use this to generate the addresses. Now, in the address, uh, we have the name of the street and then the number of the property. And this is actually based on the SNPA policy. And that's where we used to get the address. Now, once the addresses have been gotten, the digitized map is actually loaded to the digital solution. And then with the digital solution, they have the data collection tool, which they use to the field to collect information on the revenue items. So with regards to the revenue items, we actually collect information like um, the location information where we take into consideration the street name, the house number, and the Ghana Post GPS. Then with the owner information, we take the name 10, um, email, and contact. Then property information, we take the permits number, the property number, the value, and the number of rooms. Then with the business information, we collect the business name and then other certified um, documents that they need. Now, so far on the system, we have a total of 3,795,484 properties. So um, the platform uh, actually has various variations. We have the desktop app, which is used by the administrative team and the management of the records that they have. We have the data collection app, which is used to collect and update information from the field. And then we have the revenue collection app, which is used by the revenue team for collecting revenue on the field. Now, the system, as I mentioned earlier on, is web-based. So you can actually access the site using the URL. And this is what the landing page looks like. So now to look at the desktop app, um, once you enter the URL, this is where it brings you to. Now, though everyone might have a URL or can access the URL, there's still some security protocols that limits um, people who have the URL from accessing the information that's on the site. This is just to make sure that only people who have been given the privilege or access to the data can actually access it. And based on your privilege and your role in the MMDA, that will also determine how you access and interact with the information. So once you have your username, you put it in, and then you click on sign in, and that locks you in. OK, so this is what the user interface looks like. And once you open it at the top left-hand corner, you can see the statistics that is pertaining to that particular district. Now here we are just showing you information from a test server or the test environment to show you what the system actually looks like and then how it operates. So here you can see the number of parcels, the properties and businesses within this particular area. Then you have the amounts expected and the amounts collected as well as the number of transactions. Now to see the data in its individuality, we have a plus sign there that when you press can activate the data that you actually want to have a look at. Now, since we are looking at IGF, we have a list of the IGF items that you can activate to see on the map. So once you activate those maps, this is what it looks like. Now, because we're helping MMDA track revenue collection, we have a symbology that shows how this actually works. Now, each of the parcels that is painted or colored red shows that the property for that parcel is due and has, the person hasn't made payment. And the green ones actually show that payment has been done. So when you click on a parcel, you're able to see the owner and then the owner's details and whether it's actually a property or a business. Now, if someone walks into the office and wants to make payment, all you have to do is just click on this button and then you have the collection form. And then this is also the same in the revenue collectors app, which the revenue collectors will be using. So it actually makes their work easy when it comes to revenue mobilization. Now, you can also see more details of this particular property when you click on the business um, details form. And then when you want to print the bill or the demand notices, which the district assemblies usually have to distribute, you click on that. And then you have 
the demand notice. Now, this is the standard template that the MMDAs are using, and this is actually from, uh, has been prescribed by the Ministry of Local Government. So you have the signature and then the stamp of the, the municipal assembly here to show the authenticity of that particular bill that is being distributed. Okay. So the system also has other functionalities apart from just looking at data and then tracking payments. We have, um, I'll just take you through the certain one. And once you click on that button, what I want to show is actually the fee fixing resolution. And once you click on that, this is the full list of all revenue items that can be identified in an MMDA. And this list has been designed um, and prepared by the Ministry of Local Government in consultation with other stakeholders to come out with this list. Another feature we have in there is the GCR model, which actually inputs the, the GCR or the receipts that revenue collectors use in distribution to make sure that the security in what they are collecting and then what they are recording on the system. Now, the other functionalities of the systems are that we have a dashboard which can be used to monitor and then track revenue collection at the district's level, at the regional level, and then at the national level. We also have an SMS option which can be used to send SMS to rate payers, also give them reminders, and then notifications anytime they make payments. Now, we also have a net report that can be generated. We are looking at helping MMDAs also manage their revenue records properly. So they can generate reports from the system. And then we have an e-payment option where rate payers can now pay using the GHQR code or a short code whenever they get their bill to pay their revenue without having necessarily having to go to the regional office or waiting for a revenue collector to come to them. Uh, we also have video tutorials on the system that the district assembly or the individuals who are supposed to use the system can access at their, on their own and then learn to refresh their memory as to what they are supposed to do in their individual roles. Now, as I made mentioned earlier on, what we've looked at is how the system works, but we also have a tool for the revenue collectors who go to the field for revenue mobilization. And what the tool actually does, it, it makes it easy for the revenue collector to identify where he's going to, because we're speaking about location of revenue items. So how this works is, on the revenue collection app, which is installed on a tablet or a mobile device that the revenue collector uses on the field, there's usually a blue dot that tracks the mobile device the revenue collector is. So basically, it's tracking the location of the revenue collector as he moves. So as the revenue collector moves on the field, that blue dot also moves to show him where he was and where he's going to. And that's what helps in identifying the location of the businesses or the properties or whatever revenue items you're looking for. So once you click, once the revenue collector clicks on that, it loads the payment form. And the payment form is similar to what I just showed earlier. And then once he's there to collect payment, he fills in this form, submits the form, and the payment is recorded and then submitted to the main system. Now, with the whole system that we have been working on, uh, so far I've shown you what the data has been used for, how the data is being used but there are actually other usability options for the data that has been collected for that solution. And amongst them are um, currently in existence and what um, other platforms that are being developed from the first one I had just shown is the GRA rent tax app. And then we also have the OASL, that's the ground, ground rent tax app. But from the data that has been developed and collected on the system, it could also be used in the options of spatial and um, urban planning. Um, there's also expressed interest from rent control for the development of a rent control app, which they will also use in managing their affairs on the field. Then we can also use it for navigation because of the addresses that we have in there. Then for service delivery, for mapping, uh, as a mapping engine for statistical service, and then also for smart city development. Now, so far, with the development of the system, we have it in 100 MMDAs. And then we have out of this 100 MMDAs, the breakdown, and then we have 62 municipal assemblies and then 32 districts. And all the metros within the country are actually using the digital solution that I've just shown to you. And we intend to expand to two thirds of um, the country by mid next year, 2022. And then by the end of next year, we should be operating in all the 261 districts. Um, so, the solution currently is operating. It's not a proposal, but it's something that is actually running. And then there's actually potentials to use the data that already exists to 
develop other digital solutions. So thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, I'm available to respond to them. So what are the main stumbling blocks or uh, impediments to rolling out the system in the other remaining MMDAs? Mm. Good, afternoon. Good afternoon. I just want to find out where the system is being hosted. Um, and to also know where, whether there is interface with the GIFME system. Yes, so the system is actually hosted on the NITA service. It's hosted on the NITA, NITA, NITA server. And then currently we're in talks, uh, in collaboration with um, GIFMIS to integrate it. We've actually had a couple of consultations with them and then everything is online. So there's, there's that integration with, yeah. Any other questions, please? Yeah, how are you building the capacity of the MMDAs to be able to utilize the system? And are uh, constituents of these uh, areas aware that something like this is being used to collect revenue? Uh, and then also, is there something on the other side that shows how transparent these funds are being deployed? I mean, you're collecting the revenue, but can you also go a step further and show the people how that revenue is being used through a centralized system such as this? All right, so to answer your first questions, we actually um, provide district assembly with uh, capacity backstopping. Um, so once they are building the data, we are actually with them with, in every stage and in every phase. We give them the technical support when necessary. There's actually also a manual, and as I showed earlier on, to, on the system, there's video tutorials that actually show how they can use it. So in terms of capacity in using the system, uh, they get that, 400% of that. Yes, um, other districts also know about it. And then recently um, in the budget reading, the software that the minister was referring to of upscaling to all the districts was actually this. Yes, so the other districts are aware. And there are actually someone, some of them that have approached um, to use the system just this year. So as we made mention of upscaling to 170 of them by mid, we're actually considering those districts too. So there's actually information on that. Thank you. And is about transparency in the use of these funds and how that comes. Yes, so um, as part of the system, when I showed the dashboard where we looked at um, monitoring revenue, so we have monitoring at the district level, monitoring at the regional level, and monitoring at the national level. So um, individuals that are responsible for, use, um, for monitoring them, auditors inclusive, actually have access that they can look to see how much revenue is being collected and how much is actually being accounted for when they go for some of the exercises. In addition to, once uh, revenue collectors goes and we make inputs, or you use the QR code to pay, it's automatically registered in the system. This is also available to everybody to view. Even the SMS options that we have actually give us, num number one, transparency, because uh, if you are training revenue collectors, for instance, they will tell you that they say we are thieves. But once we are deploying this system, the rate uh, payer also gets a test message. So he can use that test message as a, a case in any, uh, to have his argument that, oh, I'm paying rates, I'm not seeing this, and those kind of things. So this is basically to say that we are interested in uh, building the structures, the substructures, making our decentralization works through the use of a system that belongs to the people. Thank you. All right. Well, I have a quick question. Uh, maybe you have discussed it. I uh, joined a little bit late. But um, when you did the mapping, how automated is this that? Because construction is also, I mean, it's changing, right? So you do the mapping now. If there is, for example, new construction coming in or there is replacement or whatever, how easy is that to be captured in your um, data or in your software? And my second question is, is that open source? For example, on you know the different um, mapping on houses and businesses, and can other ones tap actually into this um, data as well? Yes. Um, so with the mapping, it's actually done by the fiscal planning department of the assembly, and they are the bodies responsible for that. Now, once the map is prepared, it's actually used as a development control mechanism too. What it makes sure is that you do not build outside or uh, in what is the word I want to use? In disagreement with what has been designed. So you actually follow it. So whatever is happening, the development is in conformity with the plan that has been prepared. 
Now, what we've done is we've also provided MMDAs and the planning authorities with drones that they actually use to capture images. So the images are actually up to date. Whatever they are using for the mapping is actually up to date, so they can actually see all features that are available. They also go for ground truthing to verify whatever information has been mapped. And then they also use that, as I said earlier on, to control development within the area. So um, most of the periods in which the data has been prepared is actually based on the current situation on the ground. All right. Also, in addition, of course, as we are speaking now, a development could spring up. But the thing is that the system has that option to add more information, more spatial data, or the address map onto the software. And talking about open source and closed source, it is currently available to all the 261 MMDAs at no cost. Because this is being uh, managed by the Ministry of Local Government. So it is available to all of them. And that can it interface with other systems? Sure, it can interface with system such as the Gibbs system, even the Ghana Statistical Service, they can interface with it. So it's actually able to interface with all the system. Thanks. Yeah, uh, you mentioned something about the e-levy and whether I, I was just curious to know if when people pay electronically, whether they are going to be taxed. Okay, um, this is actually outside my purview now because <laughs> this, uh, as it unfolds now, all of us, until this budget, we were not uh, uh, privy to the e-levy. So this is a system being developed currently for uh, MMDAs. And uh, I'm sure before the budget is passed and all these things, we will get clarity on whether you come in to pay tax, you are going to get uh, an e-levy another e-levy on paying your property rates. We, we are not too sure about that now. So that's that, yeah. More questions? Yes, sir. All right. Sorry I came in late, but I would appreciate um, a brief, if, if time will permit, a brief overview of uh, your system and how best it helps us. An an overview of the system and how best it helps us. Okay, so basically the system is so it's developed to help MMDAs transform the way they manage um, revenue mobilization within their area. And then it integrates as part of it, as we had shown earlier on um, SMS e-payment options. Um, you're from Bento, right? Yes, so there's actually an integration of um, e-payment options in the system. I know that's where your question is actually coming from. And there's possibility to integrate those particular options to help MMDs have um, revenue transactions via e-platforms. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay? Thank you. All right. More questions? Okay. All right. So... Um, All right, so um, thanks very much for coming to participate. I will, will leave our contact behind in case anyone has any further questions or need any clarity. You can easily get in touch with us to have that. Um, you want to, okay. Yeah, so um, thanks very much for coming and then you all have a lovely day. Thanks, thanks you too.